On now to Silverstone, the home of British motor racing, for the 50th Tourist Trophy. 1967 world champion Denny Holm at 50 years old believes he can win it. Number one, why not? This thing positive. Jeff and I are both very confident. The car is going exceptionally well. And uh, a lot of it, of course, is the usual old problem, tyres. Uh, we only intend to go one stop, and we hope they'll do 53, 54 laps between tyre changes and uh, you know, be on the pace at the same time. The only thing was, about 20 other hot shoes had the same idea. But nevertheless, all started off well for Rover and for Ford Camperbat, with Andy Rouse on a rare outing in the championship up to third place. Rovers 1-2-3, Rice well up, and suddenly Stephen Soper decides it's time to make his play. He's past Rouse and on the tail of Rice. Jeff Allen is up to second place, and now Soper is third. The man making the pace at the front there is Armin Hana. Now Allen passes into the lead. Soper is closing the gap, however, and comes through on the inside, past Hana's rover. He loses out, but gains again on the straight when he comes through on the inside of Allen to take the lead at Stoke Corner. Jeff gives way, not all that gracefully, and Steve Soper and Ford lead the tourist trophy. Andy rouses Ford in fourth place in the early stages, soon to be slowed with problems. Two BMWs fall out, George Brosshard and Bratislava Enger. One in the bank, the other in the sand. No harm done. The Ford is firmly in the lead, followed by Rovers in second and third places. And then Carlo Rossi has his accident, helped a little by Dieter Cuesta. This brings out the pace car and a certain amount of consternation since Grice is just ahead of the leader. Steve decides to pass him anyway. The field has slowed down behind the pace car, the lights are now out as the incident has been dealt with in the normal way, and it's back to racing again. We go in car with Vince Woodman in the Mobile Holden and find out what happens when Dieter Cuesta hits you up the backside. You stop in the middle of the track facing the wrong direction. Let's have a look and see what happens from the outside. All's well that ends well, no real harm done. But one man in real trouble here is Armin Hana. Out of the race, as into the pits, comes the Alum car for Denny Holm to take over. Now in second place. The Ford is firmly in the lead. Klaus Niedewitz has slept most of the afternoon. Now he's about to wake up as Holm goes out in second place and into the pits comes the Ford. He might just as well have stayed asleep because the car lasted a handful of laps after Klaus had taken over, going out with engine trouble on the far side of the circuit. Volvo Fortunes 2 took a dip when the front suspension collapsed on the number two car. But in the lead was Denny Holm, 50 years old, and the Rover pulling away from the opposition. A late challenge from the number four Ford faded when he had a long stop, and Jeff Allen chewed his nails as the final laps were reeled off by the leading car. Holm came through to win the 50th TT and to set a record that stands in that famous Guinness book. Afterwards, we spoke both to him and to Jeff about their victory. This morning I could see he didn't say too much, but uh, no, he was real confident. And when he handed it over, I knew what he was thinking. He didn't have to tell me. We had it in the bag. Jeff, I reckoned you were on your way to your first ulcer uh, in the last 10 minutes or so of this race. Yeah, I've never, never been under that sort of pressure ever. <laughs> the last 10 laps seemed like ages, but uh, as Denny said, I felt confident all weekend.